Hey everyone, welcome to the Rival and Queen All Talk Edition. This is our second one, Sarah. December version. December version. We are in full holiday mode, having some Robin eggnog in our Nova Scotia crystal glasses. So beautiful. We are very fancy this Thursday, and we hope everyone is also being extra fancy. Sarah has a sequined uh, skirt on. So yeah, she's extra fancy. I'm very dressed up because my mother has a TV show in Newfoundland, which for anyone who doesn't know is quite the treat. Mom, I love you. And Jennifer and I had to record my sister a holiday message for her holiday show. So I'm, you know, decked, decked. out. You're decked. <laughs> my finest. I love it. You look great. Thank you, darling. You so do great. you. We've got the fireplace lit in the background. <laughs> And uh, we're really, really excited. Christmas is almost here. Sarah's going back to Newfoundland very, very soon. Surprisingly. I, and so everyone knows Safely. I'm going to be isolating for the time that I'm there. I can't wait. My parents live on a nice lot outside of town. I'll be in the woods mm -hmm. praying for snow, baking up a storm. No better place to be really. <laughs> Having the best isolation of my life with a brand new puppy. Yes. Her sister's puppy, Daisy. She's so sweet. We're officially welcoming her. She's like a member of the rival and queen community. You'll see her. Hopefully <laughs> when she gets a little bit bigger and some more experience with like cars and potty training, we are going to bring her to the studio one day. Yes. And the only thing right now, which we can't bring her because she's a very vocal puppy, which I don't think all puppies are, but she's eight weeks old. Uh, she has a hundred percent found her voice, but can you tell everyone what that means? Because I've never really heard this. So she, so she like, I don't think all puppies like bark and, and want, they whine, I think, but like she barks when she plays all the time at eight weeks, but she also screams and I've never heard a puppy scream, but she does it. If you like pick her up and she wants to play, she is super sassy which is why like she's, she's perfect for you and your sister or she's, part of the family yeah exactly she's like meant to be but she will like scream if you pick her up and she wants to play and I don't mean like like a dog like whining I mean she full-on sounds like she's screaming <laughs> she's trying to find her voice and like sing she's found it so <laughs> when she comes on the podcast she'll be vocal you'll hear her I love that. I can't wait to see her. Again. She's so <laughs> cute. All right. So we're in full holiday mode. We, as you guys know, we were doing a huge local shopping event last week, but then this week we did another really, really fun event. Sarah, tell us what it was. We did our first food drive, which was a huge success. Ash and I drove all around the greater Halifax area. Cause we went all the way to fall river. We went out to coal Harbor. We did Bedford, downtown Halifax, Dartmouth. Dartmouth. We did it all. Yeah. And we still have a few other uh, food bank items to pick up and donations, which were so generous. And what did we collect, Ash? Every piece of food in the grocery store you can imagine, like everything. And we got, okay, I'm just going to say the outcome of this because this is the first time we did this. So we got $300 cash, which is dope. And then we also got a full SUV of food. Yeah. the We need to take some more footage because- it doesn't even do it justice. The photo we have of the trunk full because my three back seats in the middle are down flat. So not only is the trunk completely full, the whole vehicle, even behind the driver's seat and in the front passenger seat, there's cans and boxes everywhere. And not just like one layer, like the food is actually stacked up higher than like up very high behind our heads in the front. So a hundred percent, not safe for driving, but like I have not moved in all fairness. I have not moved the car since we parked it safely until tomorrow. I mean, this is going to come out after, but tomorrow we're dropping everything off and I'm so excited. We're so stoked and we still have a few more things to pick up. So for everyone who took part in the food drive, we freaking love you guys. That Thank is so you. awesome. We have such a great community. Special shout out to the parlor and the lemonade general store who put drop boxes there for us. We love you guys. And also I'm just going to share one really funny tidbit from the food drive just for our listeners because they'll appreciate it. Oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I threw up because <laughs> I got like, car like sick. two or three times. I threw up, yeah, three times on the side of the road. And what's funnier is I did it right before this lovely young gentleman who I've been seeing. I, we did it right, I threw up right before we went to his house. Like on the <laughs> corner to his house. 
and I knew we were turning he like you would be able to see his house when we turn around the street so I was like Ashley pull over right now I like opened the car door threw up got out and walked but you know what all worth it I would do another six hours in the car tomorrow we let I was exhausted last night I mean you were along for the ride but I was dry I felt like we had driven we could have driven to Maine and back not back to Maine and it was the same amount of time we spent in the car because a couple of our friends, we popped in just to say hi, like safely, the people we know, but everyone else, it was kind of just grab and go off to the next spot. So it was a, it was a busy day, but I loved it. I like thought it was going to take us two hours. And of course it was, a no, much I bigger, knew, <laughs> I knew it wasn't <laughs> a much bigger success than we thought. That's just like a testament to how freaking awesome everyone in our community is. We loved it. You guys, I think this has to be an annual event, but maybe Absolutely. next year we'll get you guys to come to us depending on the situation. Yeah. And maybe we'll do, we'll do it up. We'll have some drinks, like some music, like some cider or something, some music and make it a thing. My megaphone, obviously the whole thing. We appreciate it. It was so awesome. And uh, thank you guys so much. So speaking of the holidays and gifts, we gave back to our community and people that need it, which is of course important, but I want to talk about kind of our favorite gifts and our favorite things that we might recommend perhaps for other people to buy for themselves or for others. Okay. So let's, so I always find this interesting because when I was younger, there was always like one gift as a kid that I wanted. Like dreaming about. Oh yeah. And like often, like one year, I'll tell you, Tell me. one that comes to mind right away is like one year I wanted an easy bake oven. Another year it was rollerblades. And I have to tell you both times I got them a lot after that, it was like Legos. Mm -hmm. Um, but those were like two things that I remember being like, like dreaming of and I got I I I did get an easy bake oven and loved it too like that your dreams were made back then when that happened and like yeah I got an NSYNC CD and a new discman with it or is that what it's called like a CD discman and I remember I don't know how old I was but thinking like this was the best day I could listen to music non-stop like it was just a new concept yes I don't know that is so oh yeah we got Game Boy Colors once too and that was the only video games I ever played growing up and that was like something that was a big did you get the original iPod I don't no not the big one we did they were huge it was like basically like your phone but thicker yeah no, we, I don't think I got that one. I don't remember, to be honest. I think I had a different MP3 player because at the time it wasn't like necessarily no, just exactly. Apple. I remember, I think my dad was more excited to give us the, the iPods back then. Then like we were just kind of like, what is this? You know what I mean? Like yes. it could hold so many songs. We didn't really care. Okay, so 2020, what's your favorite product that you're using or something that you have that you think other people would love? So, oh. I think for me, okay, so here, if I think it's not necessarily mine, but if I were to say like the gift of this season as an adult, and then I'm going to weigh in on like a kid stuff because I'm so out of touch with them. Oh, I've got, I've got three gifts that I'm going to say. Sorry. I made this question. I didn't think of the answer. (laughs) Okay. Here's one. Cause I actually do want this is a Dyson vacuum. It is a very stupid, unexciting thing, but in my thirties, I'm like, I, and it's 600, 700 bucks. I'm not going to buy myself a $700 vacuum. That is like a dope gift on that same line. I, I think, um, oh my God, it just, okay. The other two things I'm going to tell you, the one that I actually think is the gift of the season, which no one else cares about is Macage came out with these ski suits matching jacket and bottoms let me tell you is it a one piece or just it's two pieces but it does look like a one piece and they are the one that i am like dying over and i think people should love these they're tight and they're like bright red with leather finishes on them it's over the top but i think you'll never miss sarah on the slopes if there's an avalanche you'll be able to spot her just stick your arm through the snow (laughs) there's nothing i would rather than an overpriced designer ski suit to go skiing in i I think it's ridiculous but that would be like I think if like the gift of the season, no one else cares. Well, hopefully Santa gets that for you. What's your third? It's definitely not. Um, okay. This one, no one knows about, but it's $12. So we're going to go from like, we've got a $12, a 700 and a $2,000. Highest gift in the range. <laughs> so the $12 one, you get this from Kent and it is a party light and no one knows about this. I think I'm the only one who gives this, but I'm going to argue it's the gift of the season. It's really good. It use, it's a light bulb. You just stick it in any lamp and it works. It's a good little surprise. I should get one. 
So that's what I think. <laughs> Maybe my Santa gift. will give me one this year. That's awesome. So mine is, well, I kind of was thinking about something that I've been really into and loving that I want to buy for most people I know because it's well-priced. It's a great gift is the Revlon one-step dryer. It's around $65. I think when I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond, I had some type of coupon. So it was like $50 or something. So amazing. I have really thick hair and it's, it's pretty long, not as long as Sarah's, but we both have thick, thick hair and yes. blow drying it is like, I dread. I hate blow drying my hair. And when I do, it goes out to here. And then I have to wait a day for it to like tame. Yeah. So this kind of gives you a little bit of the, the friction that you need in a round brush, but also like the drying. So I just feel like it's a very practical, I know it's won a, a ton of rewards yes. and it's so well-priced. Well, and this is what I was going to say, because one of the things I was going to say was the Dyson air wrap, but then I remembered you were going to say this and I was like, oh, I'm not going to bring that up because I think you're right. Like the Dyson air wrap, my mom has it, but it like, I can't use it every time. And for $700, it's too much. Mm -hmm. Like it looks great, but I'm not going to use it every time I want to dry my hair. This is why I want to get the Revlon one. Cause you said you loved it. It's so good. And I, I know I watched, I researched it a bit and watched some YouTube videos to see like, do I want to invest in the Dyson or a few other, uh, I know there's a dry bar one, a couple different ones, but all of them kept saying that the Revlon was still like the cream of the crop. So, but I think that the air, what's it called? Air wrap, I think. Air wrap is good because it does like four or five or six or something different things. So I think like long-term, that's a good one to have as far as like the curling, the drying. The only thing I'll say is like my mom has the regular one and her hair is only shoulder length, whereas mine is like, you know, she down to the boobs mm -hmm. a bit like below actually, to be honest. So it, my hair is just too long for that one. They have since come out with a yes, long hair a one. Bit, yeah. So I'd be interested in trying that, but I wouldn't buy the regular one because it, it didn't work for my hair. Like mm -hmm. my hair is just too long for it. Hashtag girl problems, long hair problems. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm into it. Anyway. So I feel like that is a good gift. I'm into it. Everyone, if you don't have one, give it a shot. You'll love it. Let us know what you think the gift of the season is. We would love to hear from you because we are very open to a suggestion. Even in January, we like to still buy. <laughs> yeah, there's birthdays, there's other things coming. Um, all right, Ash, let's talk about 2021. Oh, yes, I think a breath of fresh air. Really looking forward to it. I, I think I said this before, but I love the meme. I saw it the other day too, which says, like, let's just start pre-drinking for New Year's Eve now because people just want this year. And I still think there's going to be things in 2021 and 2020, like in the future that are going to be hard and we're going to have to overcome. But I think in our generation, this was the first thing that's been like crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like our say the first thing that's been fucked. fucked. <laughs> like our grandparents have been like, I feel like for their generation, it's, it's not that shocking. Our parents' generation, ours, it's like, this is our not normal. For yeah. Us. Our grandparents had one or two world wars that they the lived through. Yeah. The all... depression. Yeah. They had like some big things. This is like, we've had nothing mm -hmm. not comparing this to a world war. Just saying like, we've had nothing that's been a global, like seismic oh. impact kind of thing. Absolutely. And yeah, exactly. It's something that everyone can relate to and has been through and has been impacted or know someone that's been like gratefully economically or their health, whatever. So I feel like 2021 New Year's is always kind of that fresh new year, new goals. And 2020 was supposed to be like good. Everyone kept comparing it to like perfect vision. It was like this great omen. And then like that went down the shitter. Well, we don't know yet. Like it may still be, we may look back on this time in a couple of years and really appreciate it for reasons we don't know yet. So let's just keep that. And I think that's love part in our of hearts. It. When I was reflecting, I saw your note about kind of like reflecting on this year. That's part of it is how grateful are you that you've been able to travel to places or have big gatherings or go to concerts, trips, even go out to eat with your friends in a big group or parties, like things like that. I think when we see our family in the future, when it's like safe, it's going to feel so much better. Yeah. And I have to say, like, I'm very fortunate that I get to go home this winter for Christmas and I'm still very thankful for that. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, one of the reasons we've decided to do that and isolate is because like, we just don't know about what's coming or how long it'll be until we can really go home again freely. So we just decided we had to do it now and uh, do it safely, but you're totally right. Like it does put things into perspective. So on that note, Ashley, 
Okay. What is your hope for 2021? What is my hope? Well, I hope let's just like the, the obvious low hanging fruit is that COVID can kind of like start to be relieved and especially in the United States, like that's bad. Like everyone wants to travel the economy. Like, I just hope that there's hope for kind of like getting people back on their feet in so many different ways. And I don't know. I feel like this year went by so quickly, almost a blur that I'm just excited for a new year. Like I'm excited. I don't know. I can't explain it. Is there anything? Okay. So yeah, we want the world to heal and open their hearts and like a lot of great things to happen globally. And that's really nice. (laughs) She's going to put it back on. And I'm not diminishing it. I think that's important. And like, I think we can all unanimously say like, we want that. We want everything open. We want, Mm -hmm. you know, the good, the good life to be back in our lives. So bad. The good life. Um, but what do you want? Give me like a, do you want to get like a new pair of shoes? You want to, you want to meet oh, Thomas you... Rhett? Like, okay. what do you tell me? Oh thing. yeah. Let's just, let's just touch on that for a second is <laughs> we were meant to go to Thomas Rhett. As most of you know, this summer we were very devastated, but we're hoping to go now. I would love, I really want to go on any sort of trip whether it's a girl's trip or a friend, like I want to go, maybe go watch a sporting event. Like I just want to do that and like rejoice in how you know fun what? it is. Badass. Yeah. Like, like a trip, like a good trip where everyone's safe and everyone's happy and we can just let loose and have a good time. Maybe touch a hundred people. Maybe like touch in a crowd. hundred people <laughs> <laughs> in one day. Dun, dun, dun. That'd be so fun. What what about you, Sarah? What's 2021? (sighs) 2021. So exciting. So I have so many hopes for 2021. I mean, like, actually, do you know what? I rewrote. I didn't know I was going to bring this up. It just came to me. So this happened a week ago. It's very interesting. And sometimes I write these little scripts I read every day. They make me real happy, like so happy, like things. I'm just like, I want this and I want this. And it just like sometimes comes to me and I'll jot them down and then I read them every day. And I've actually been like more so choosing how I want things to go like purposely rather than just like going with the flow. I mean, I'm still going with the flow, but I'm like, oh, wouldn't this be cool? So I've been reading that every day. So that's been just like a new thing. But in it, I want to and I really hope this happens actually before 2021, but really launch a new business at the start of 2020. 221. What's 221? Uh, 20. <laughs> I know. I'm just joking. 221. Uh, 221. <laughs> um, it's 221. So I think I'd be very happy about that. I'd also really like to fall in love again. That'd be nice. You're going to say that. Did you know? Yes. That was, well, that's nice. Because that's like a normal thing, I think, to like. But I think it would be nice. The, I, thought, I hope you do. <laughs> I hope I'm there for the, but, the whole ride. But you know what? I didn't feel like that at the start of last year. Like that wasn't as much on my mind or my heart, but I feel like I've sorted through a few now things this last year. Yeah. Good. You know, that's great. <laughs> then we can pop out some children together. Okay. That's one thing. That would be dope. I don't know if it will happen in 2021, but I feel like as I get older, cause I will be 34 in 2021. Never say never. That I, I mean, start to get like anxious about it. Well, I'll tell you've you, you've got a whole year younger than me. You've got a whole <laughs> extra year before you're 34. Let's just remember. That's true. Well, listen, I mean, never say never because you, you know, you've got three and a half months. You could be pregnant within those three and a half months. Who knows? My God. Then the, then, then the rival and queen podcast next year would have a huge focus on pregnancy. <laughs> Yeah, I love this nipple cream and this onesie that I got for the baby. OMG. Oh, that'd be um, dope though. I, I mean, people- shout out to all the moms out there. They might love it. We could have we won't be drinking rum I'm and eggnog. I'm just thinking of like you breastfeeding while we're recording an episode. That will never happen. Who knows? I don't I think breastfeeding's great. That's what our breasts are for. I think it's healthy. It's great for the baby. Like, I'm just not into it. It weirds me out. Oh, that's okay. I know. But I'll breastfeed on episode. So that's fine. <laughs> wow. Mark, yeah. Mark, our producer's like cringing. He's like, yeah. I gotta get rid of these girls when they're yeah. <laughs> before they as get soon pregnant. as they're knocked up, they're cut. All right. Ash, is there anything you do to prepare for the new year? Not particularly like I know our friend Kara Kim shout out to Kara she's very into um cleaning her house 
She's oh. like got this superstition about starting 2021 20, or just any year off like fresh. Everything's clean. It's new. But I don't feel that way. Like I'm usually traveling. I've been away for a lot you of New Year's, been. like probably five or six. I've been gone for four different um, New Year's Eves. And I do love that. I find like there's something magical about being in a different city. I don't know. But no, I don't. I actually forgot that. Like, are you happy to be here for a change this year for Christmas? I'm happy to be. I do like staying home for Christmas, but I do really like going away for New Year's Eve. It's fun. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I tend to come home for New Year's and I do like that time because you still get holidays. I still get holidays in Halifax. But imagine us 20, like a year from now, we're going to Paris. That just was the first city in my mind for New Year's Eve. Yeah, I was thinking there, Greece. I'd be really into it. No, I'm with you, girl. Maybe maybe we'll put that out into the the universe. I'm just like, I've got the Kevin McAllister thing where I'm I'm just not into the palm trees. I'm not saying never, but I'm saying like, I have a hard time getting amped Mm. up about that. I used to be, I like cried the first time I went away. Yeah, I think I I would cry. And it wasn't as bad as I thought, but you are worried about all the things that you feel like you're going to miss because you wait all year for them. But it's not, I think as you get older too, like you still really value those things, but you realize- nothing's going to be the same from when you're a child, which is sad because those are the best Christmases ever. But anyway, I do actually like going away for Christmas. I don't always want to go, for example, Florida, Jeff's parents have a place there. So we do go there. Um, but I, I would like to go other places. Like I actually think I would enjoy running home in Europe and like being in Europe for Christmas. <laughs> Sign her up. So next year, Sarah's new beau, <laughs> so me, me largely pregnant. <laughs> My husband, Jeff, like we're going to be a European Christmas and New Year's Eve. Sign me up. I mean, why, why not try it? I think let's I'm put it out there. Things. Let's put it out there. Let's put it out there. I'm down girl. We'll um, ship all our gifts there ahead of time. Hell yeah. I'll be wearing my red McCosh ski suit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, this is good. Um, but just like to prepare for New Year's now. I feel like this year feels different for me because I'm literally grateful in so many different ways that I feel like that's, I was in the tub the other day and sometimes I had some like dark moments in 2020, like just during, like it was, I get like really down these rabbit holes and get stressed and worried, but I was in the bathtub the other day and I just was laying there and I was like, I'm so happy. Like my life is so, you just have to appreciate everything and like how good your Mm -hmm. life actually is. And uh, so I feel like that would be my biggest thing for 2020 is just being like, Life, life is good. Despite I'm, everything that's happening, life is good. And you know what? I'm not always amped to go back and do like big reviews of the year. Like sometimes it feels like work, but this you year- You do that a lot anyway. Like you're kind of like in t- tune with that. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm often like reflecting. I think it's in my journaling. I do it a lot, but yes. the thing I am genuinely excited to do this year, because I think, like you said, it was such a different year and it, it put things in perspective and you learn to appreciate things or at least see things in a different light. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm doing this practice- from this chick, Pita Kelly, who I really like, she's an Australian and it's called like mining for gold. And you go back through every month and look at like the wins and really like things that you're proud of from that period of time or things that you're really grateful for. And so I'm excited to kind of do that this year. And I'm actually excited to do a yearly one. Yeah. So that's how I'm going to prepare for 2021, but I'm actually kind of glad that I'll be in quarantine home because I can't, we literally can't leave the property. So like I'll have the, a couple days before Christmas and because I'm going home the 20th, it's earlier than I normally get there. So I'll have like a day to do that. And I'm, I'm, that's how I'm going to prepare for this year. You're good at giving yourself that like space. I feel like that's something a lot of us don't do, but I think for the end of the year, it's important to even just sit for an hour and just like, you don't have to write anything, do this fancy ceremony, just like consciously like sit there and, and like have a moment for yourself. And you know what I do actually is like, and it's kind of be fun. Like I go back through my photos. Cause I forget. So you forget so much shit. If you go back mm-hmm. to your photos from January, like just try this, you'll be shocked. Even at like, you'll have photos of food or like stupid things you did, but they'll bring a smile to your face. And I go through my Google calendar and those things, like I forget stuff that I've done. Uh, and they are good reminders. I've had a lot of those moments actually this year. I was thinking about in the summer because we were so lucky in Nova Scotia to have kind of like a COVID free summer where we were able to still enjoy. And there were a few really fun things that probably normally us all getting together or having like a party, like your birthday going uh, tubing and stuff like that. I just felt like it was extra special and fun because we were able to do that. Yeah. I'm you know with I mean? you. Like there are, t- there are several vacations, mini vacations here. We had locally that were like extra special. 
I know. So those things, so I want to go back through those. So that's how I'm going to prepare. And then hopefully this time next year, we are reliving the awesome trip we had. And then we're preparing for our European Christmas, like, and, and the wonderful (laughs) joint pregnancies, obviously. (laughs) We'll just get pregnant on the trip. How about that? Because then, Oh, that sounds great. Actually, I like that way better. (laughs) We better have like, I don't know what we're going to have to do some magic to our bodies, but Hey, you heard it here first. And we are, we are, and like, we we hope that it's even more able. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I love this so much. We've, we've lost it. Mm -hmm. Ash, should we do our favorite things this, this month? Yeah. Are there any other reflections you want to share? No. All right, let's do it. So we're going to start in our all talks doing our favorite things every month. Ash, do you want to go first and tell me your favorite food this month? Okay. So my favorite food, and I thought of this yesterday, it's cheese right now. Like, I don't know. It's not an entire meal or of any sorts, but it's a food Who cares? And I just find, I don't, I try not to eat a ton of dairy or I'll have like a random couple of pieces of cheese here and there. But like at Christmas time, I think it's, you eat all like the decadent cheese, like the different types of cheese wrapped in like whatever cranberries or like spices really into cheese right now. What about you? I'm with you. My favorite food this month is eggnog. I just like normally am not this hard into it, but I am. It's eggnog eggnog or chicken soup. Is that a food? Well, Well, it is today. I'm consuming it. So uh, you know what? I don't care. No, (laughs) this is our podcast. We could, and it's a food, (laughs) whatever you're putting into your body. Okay. If, If not eggnog, it's chicken, chicken soup. Okay. Oh, I actually love chicken soup. So good. Those are my things. All right. Tell what's next. What's your favorite product this month? Well, I'm still, I'm still going to vocalize the love for the all in one, whatever it's called Revlon. I didn't do this. Sarah Arbuckle did my hair the other day, but I want to say one of my favorite things you can smell it a bit right now is that the candle, what is the brand? I forget. We'll we'll put it in the from, show notes from Thornbloom. It's a pine candle. It's a very like yeah. well-known brand, whatever it is. But anyways, that's like my favorite thing right now today in this moment. That's a good one. I'm actually very jealous that you said that because what am I going to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's nothing possibly else that you could love. I know, but now I really love that. I have something. I, I So I've got the thing that is actually my, I'm most stoked about right now is I just got a new lipstick. I'm super into it. And here's, Do you have it on? No, I'm not wearing it. I wish mm-hmm. I was. I didn't think through this, but it's the Bar Crawl lipstick from Vicky Mina because I'm obsessed. Bar Crawl? Yeah. Okay, mm, first of all, the name is unreal. <laughs> yeah. And then also the color I'm obsessed with because it's like this luscious, like purpley red. Anyways, that's my favorite product right now. I'm into it. I like the big dark lips. I like that. Christmas time, sign me up. I like that. I'm also thinking about how much I love these glasses too. I've been using them a lot. Nova Scotia basic. Crystal? Nova Scotia Crystal. And I just find, I feel so fancy with them for some reason. You're very fancy. This time of year, it's it, it's it's special. Okay, what is your favorite experience lately? Okay, here's my absolute favorite experience is walking around at night looking Christmas lights. Mm. That's what I'm into right now. And like I asked your brother to go with me tonight, but I don't think we can because it's a bit rainy. It's but kind of foggy. Yeah. Tomorrow night, Greg Sampson. That's perfect. Mine was a local day of shopping. I loved that. I just thought it was the fun. I wish it didn't end because Saturday things close a bit earlier sometimes at like five or six. And I wish that like we kept going. I still have to go do that. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to go because I have a few other places I need to hit. So, and that'll be the end of my Christmas shopping, but you're right. That was like just to be out in in shops. And it just felt like everyone was like extra connecting that day, extra personable. People were happy to see you. Not that they're not usually, but it's a, it's a different vibe very thankful welcoming I've been tipping people extra lately buying things I don't need just because I'm like oh this feels nice it does feel nice I love that all right and what's your favorite song right now it is put your record on by I hate saying this because it's like the name backwards Rit Momney yeah it's like what's the it's like it's like Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney but like it's a tongue twister but Rip apparently Momney. I read today that it was a TikTok remake like a remake <gasps> of uh, Green Bailey Ray who is a British singer who I absolutely love but he remade this and I think it just was like done for TikTok apparently or someone like made it famous through TikTok this Brit this cover <laughs> <I can't even laughs> 
It is a great song. I love it. I just can't like today I was getting ready and I think I listened to it three or four times. I can't stop. I don't know why. Girl, I'm with you. Um, my favorite song right now. So actually they're like totally opposite ends of the spectrum, both by Thomas Rhett. And it's either um, Christmas in the country, which is his Christmas song. Mm-hmm. But then I've also been playing his song sand on repeat, which is about a summer vacation. <laughs> We so, dream. so either one, those are my two, like, I don't listen to, I made these questions of favorites and I just give more than one answer for everything. <laughs> we, we need to start like a hashtag or something right now. That's like Thomas Rhett on rival and queen or like Thomas Rhett. Joins if Rhett anyone we will put it out there. If anyone has a connection to him and can get us to meet him, we love you forever. Please. please. And we won't be that psychotic. And we'll be so girl. good. We'll be so good. I'll be so professional. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll tell him all about everything very <laughs> calmly. <laughs> I would love him so much. He would love- like us. We'd be besties. I think we would get on well. I also think we'd get on well as wife. Uh, and you know? kids love us. So like his kids children, do love kids us. love us. So like we would just fit in in Nashville. Like we get on like. Get us on the next plane. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so good. Ash, before we wrap, do we want to play around a Queenie Grams just for 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 a hoot? For a hoot. Let's do it. All Pull right. Them up. Give me a number. I'm going to go with what are how high are we now? I think we're at a hundred. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go for ninety six. I can't even see that, but I feel like Ooh. the newer one. Would you rather see into your future or fix something in your past? Ooh, this is a good one. I don't think we've ever had this. I think that I would see into my future Ooh. because there's nothing like, I think that anything that's happened in the past, I've already dealt with that. That's like bothered me. You know what I mean? And, and like, I'm not carrying around this big burden of something that's happened in the past that I need to make. Right. Like I, I feel like I'd like to see in the future because then I could maybe change what I need to change in the moment right now in reality to then like change the future. Maybe perhaps, I don't know. You are very wise. Mm-hmm. I think that is a very wise answer. Okay. I was going to call you Yoda, <laughs> but then I was like, is that, the- I don't know anything about, is it I'm Star-, Star Wars? Star Wars? Yeah, I don't either, but I think you're right. <laughs> All right. Ooh, the mic is hot. <laughs> Sarah's turn. What emoji do you use the most? I'm going to tell you, I've been using the uh, hand on the face. Really? I haven't got that one from you yet. Oh, really? That one's like, I'm have you been sending that to. Oh, just anytime I do anything embarrassing. I'm really surprised you haven't uh, gotten that for me. Cause like I sent it three times yesterday telling people I threw up on the food drive. <laughs> I wonder if there's some type of thing you can download on your phone that like picks up which emoji you actually use the most. Ooh. I bet there is. We shouldn't look at that. Okay. Mine's probably the crying laughing face. Oh yeah. I use that one a lot too, mm-hmm. but I use the hand to face a lot to be like, oh, I did something stupid again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that so much. I love that so much too. Uh, Ash, before we wrap, there's a few things we want to tell people. So much we want to tell people. So we're going to take a break from the podcast over the holidays. So if you're a little behind, you can catch up on some episodes, but we'll be back here January 7th on Thursday. We love you guys. We'll miss you over the holidays. We will miss you. You'll, we'll, you'll still, still see us. You, yeah. can't, you can't get rid of us. I was going to say, we'll still be on Instagram and you can always pop onto YouTube. If you want to see some of our videos, we'll be sharing them on Facebook as well. Um, big shout out and thank you to everyone who supported our food drive. We love you guys so much. And we're going to, because of you, we're going to make it an annual event. So yeah, thank you. That was amazing. Absolutely. And then we want to wish you all a very happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy, happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Ever, all the things we're, we're sending love. If you don't celebrate anything, happy winter. We love you. Just we have you. a great Thursday. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We really appreciate any reviews and check us out on YouTube. Yes. And if you're watching there, give us a subscribe and a like as well. Our latest holiday shopping adventures are going to be out soon. So there, there's actually lots of good videos coming. So let us know what you guys think. We love you. Bye.